Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video, I'm going to show you three different Super Mario DIYs using Dollar Tree materials. For the first project, I'm going to create Mario's brick. My son recently got his first little plant for his room, so I'm going to create a little planter box for him. I'm using a pack of Jenga blocks and this part is completely optional, but I took some sandpaper and sanded the corners of one side down just to make it look a little more of a brick. But again, that's optional. I've already painted them red. You really don't have to paint them individually like I did. You can wait until you've put the box together and then paint. That might be a little easier. To create that gap in between the blocks, I'm using some toothpicks. And it's just easier to break them by hand the size you need instead of using the scissors. I'm starting out by gluing a piece of toothpick to one side of the block. And from here, I'm gonna glue another block to the toothpick. Make sure the toothpick piece is not taller than the actual block, just so it doesn't affect the next layer. The third piece I'm adding will be glued going the other way to start the next side of the planter. You'll see later in the video that every other row will be slightly different just to create that brick pattern. So I'm gonna add a block right here to start that next row. And now I'm gonna continue the pattern of adding a piece of toothpick on the side of the block and to the top.
Here are the finished layers and from here you could add more pieces to close one end but I left both ends open simply because I did not feel like painting more blocks. To fill in the gap I'm using some modeling clay. I'm using a little bit at a time rolling them into really thin lines and I'm starting with the gaps that are going vertical. And I'm just sticking that clay right in the gaps. These clay sculpting tools from Dollar Tree also came in handy to help push the clay into the gaps. After I've added the clay to all my gaps, I'm going back and using that sculpting tool to push in the clay and to smooth it out a bit. The clay did leave a little bit of residue on my hand, which got on the box. So I did touch up the bricks a little bit with some paint. And lastly, and this is optional, I applied Mod Podge to the entire thing to give it a nice shine. For the next project, I'm using two packs of fabric, the star metal frame, some black iron on vinyl, and some stuffing from Dollar Tree. 
I'm using the star frame to trace that star shape onto the two pieces of fabric. You can use anything with a star shape to trace it with. It doesn't have to be the wreath frame. Make sure you are tracing it on the back side of the fabric. And once I have it traced, I'm going to cut out the shape. The next step is to create the eyes. So I'm going to use a popsicle stick and my X-Acto knife to cut out around the popsicle stick. Now just flip it upside down and create that curve to the bottom of the vinyl piece. If you are unfamiliar with iron on vinyl, it's just a type of material that adheres to fabric. It does have a protective film over the vinyl, so make sure you remove that. And of course, if you have a Cricut, you can do all of this with your Cricut. Now I'm going to take my eyes and iron them onto the front of the fabric. Use some parchment paper over the fabric so you don't burn the vinyl. I'm using the lowest setting on my iron and I'm applying the heat for about five seconds. While this part is facing up, I'm going to take my second piece and lay that face down onto the first piece. Now I'm going around the edges and I'm going to start gluing them together. Make sure you take your time and really glue the side because any part you don't glue, you are going to end up with a hole. I'm going to leave one side unglued and I'm going to flip this inside out by pushing the opposite end of the fabric right through the unglued side. I'm gonna take my filling and start stuffing my star. Make sure you get those points really good. So if you do end up with a hole, I just added some glue and then made a fold to the edges and pressed them together.
After I've added all of my stuffing, I'm going to glue the last side of the star. And I'm just folding the edges in and adding some glue. For the last project, you'll need a few packs of these wooden cubes, some wood glue, and some paint. First thing I did was paint the cubes, and as you can see, I got a little lazy while painting because I ended up only painting two sides of the cube instead of all the sides. The most important thing is to have one side painted, and once all of this is put together, you can go back and paint the sides that are on the outside. This is the picture that I followed. You can pause the video here if you want to follow this picture, or you can go on Google or Pinterest and search Pixel Mario. So I'm using some wood glue and I'm going to start line by line putting Mario together. I start by gathering the amount of cubes I need for one row at a time, and then just glue them together. And now once he's all put together, I'm going through and painting the sides of the cubes and doing a little touch up wherever it's needed. I did apply a coat of Mod Podge over the entire thing just to add a little extra security and to also give it a little shine. 